Bonnie Ross, the head of 343, sits down for an interview, talks about the Battle Royale in Halo Infinite, the potential of that, the game as a service model, and the importance of campaign and multiplayer, as well as a tease of Halo Infinite at 2019 E3. Stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand the detail. But how's it going, everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another commentary here. We're talking about, like I said, this interview that Bonnie Ross just did with Mariah McCaffrey at of IGN. There's a lot to go dissect in this interview. It's an hour-long thing. I'll give you guys some of the highlights of this. I'm we'll probably breaking something into a couple of videos because there's a lot to go into. But I talked about the history of 343, the transfer of going over from Bungie to 343, and the uh, potential uh, of moving forward when it comes to Infinite and why they're taking so long to make this great game and what can we look forward to as well. So if you guys like these news information videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see some more content like this, leave a comment down below what your thoughts are on the video. If you're new to the channel, let's stay up to date with anything Halo related, please make sure to tap subscribe with the bell because we know sub boxes can be kind of weird at times. Let's get right into the video here. Battle Royale, right? It's it's the <laughs> it's the big thing now. Apex Legends, Legends has, has out, taken yes. off like a rocket. I mean, the respawn super talented team, and they've got they're over they're like twenty five million total players yeah. right now at three four three. How are you guys looking at that? So yeah, Battle Royale again a conversation point when it comes to Halo. Now, my personal opinion, I do have on Battle Royale. I do want to hear what. Bonnie Ross has to say, we'll commentate about it throughout and let's get right into it. I think that um, Vince and team did a great job with Apex Legends and you could see much more like, hey, you could do this with Halo. You know what I mean? Like I think some of the things that they've done with Apex, like they kind of for us kind of feels a bit more like Halo. But within this interview, she did mention about how she really liked what Respawn was able to accomplish with Apex Legends. I can do, I do as well. I think that was probably hands down the best battle royale right now on the market. I think the game truly has legs where it can overtake Fortnite. But the thing is, we've actually seen not only a boost with you know the Respawn brand and Apex Legends, but because of the success of Apex Legends, a surge of population has come to Titanfall 2. A Redditor recently posted a picture of the Xbox population that broke over 10,000 recently for Titanfall 2. That's quite a lot as they haven't had that many people currently online at one point since 2017. Now would you see the same effect when it comes to a Halo Battle Royale? It all kind of depends how they do it. Bunny Ross did mention this. I will say that we have conversations all the time on like what the right uh, thing to do is. Whatever we do, we have a sandbox that gives us the ability to have multiple different game types. Well, she does mention that the team certainly has been talking about it. Uh, I do know that previously they said that the only BR we're concerned about is the battle rifle. Though, Bonnie Ross doesn't straight up deny saying Battle Royale won't happen for Halo Infinite, but she does leave it open-ended, saying that they want to give the players or or the developers of Infinite the ability to potentially make the, something like this happen if the fans really want it. I remember a tweet on, from Sketch just said, hypothetically, what would you would you be down with a Battle Royale in Halo 5, or sorry, in Halo Infinite? And it was split right down the middle, pretty much 33% yes, 33% no, and 33% maybe essentially. Uh, and that just kind of tells you that a lot of people are certainly interested in it. And it all kind of depends how 343 goes about making a battle royale for Halo Infinite. Obviously, if you just do a copy and paste, kind of like what uh, Call of Duty did with Blackout, if that it's just it's gonna just you're not gonna advance the genre for or give you any reason to make it besides just you know just doing it for the money or the population boost. The reason why Apex Legends I feel is doing so well is because of it being such an advancement of the battle royale genre. And so where like Blackout was really just kind of more of a more polished version of PUBG, but then Apex was like, well, let's put this into a hero shooter and also add a lot of you know quality of life improvements to the game as well when it comes to the looting, when it comes to pointing out like the contextual call out ability that you have on Apex is absolutely amazing. It's such a fluid, well done experience that it's actually just 
It's, uh, it's tough to beat Apex, I'm just saying. I think whatever we do needs to be the right thing for Halo. Sure. And so whether or not you call it a battle royale or how we're thinking about things going forward, the team definitely thinks about this needs to be right for Halo. We've got our arena. How are you looking at our bigger um, play? So it's, it's always an active conversation, but um, not <laughs> saying anything more about it Well, right now. I mean, you know, you got to And look I do at think it. that Apex Legends, they've done a great job. It's super fun. Now, if you're really concerned about how fondly Bonnie Ross is talking about Apex Legends and how she even sees Halo involved a little bit with Apex Legends, don't worry, she does mention about how the studio does want to do this correctly, whatever it is for Halo. They want to treat Halo properly. They don't want to try to push it into anything it doesn't that it's not. Kind of like what they did with Halo Force multiplayer, I'd say. Uh, though she does mention, rounding off right there, saying how uh, that she did really like Apex Legends. Yeah, obviously, I think there still is plenty of time for a for a battle royale in Halo to be developed, certainly. Uh, if I, I mean, I heard possibly saying that battle royale for Apex Legends was created pretty quickly. So it's something that could be a, you know, within a year. I know that's how long it took for uh, Treyarch to come out with Blackout. So, I mean, there's... There's certainly time for it to come out for Infinite. But I do like the reassurance that she said about how they want to make sure they want to do it whatever's right for Halo. And I think that's something that's super important that need to be emphasized right there. Obviously, Battle Rail, super big trend, will certainly help out with population. But you want to make sure that you do anything correctly for the, pri for the franchise. Brian McCaffrey also continues on talking about how Halo has always been known for its campaign and its multiplayer. It's one of those few shooter games out there that still has a great balance between those two. And how a lot of games nowadays are kind of, you know, not really pay much attention to the campaign side of things and focus more on the multiplayer, pushing that game as a service, as in pushing those microtransactions in. As we do know, from stated from 343 that they want Halo Infinite to be a game as a service. So Ryan was kind of going asking like, well, if you guys going to put a lot of effort into games as a service, getting those microtransactions in, you guys going to pay attention to the campaign? And uh, what does that mean for the man game as a service as well? Bonnie Ross goes into it. I think Halo does serve, I mean, a lot of, I mean, we have research on what players um, play, but when you look at what our DNA is and you look at research and people, it, it is a beloved story and it is like a perfectly orchestrated sandbox for a multiplayer um, as well. You can't take a feature away from Halo. I mean, we need to be able to, but the audience definitely wants it to be additive. Well, I think what she's mentioning about that is that you got to have these core aspects of Halo that really make it Halo, saying like Forge on launch which is probably something that would be really big uh that's definitely something that needs to be there it's a huge community feature and really a really excellent content creator for the game as well so then devs don't have to work so hard to make all these game modes and maps let the community do it and you know they definitely took advantage of that a little bit in halo 5. i like to see them actually take more advantage of that in halo infinite which i'm sure with this new engine will help them kind of implement new features like that and also just the general game modes as well that were kind of trickled in through halo 5 for the first I believe six months or until june of 2016 where you had like infection didn't come until may we had a lot of content that was really kind of expected with halo 5 release that was kind of trickled out throughout the months and which really led the launch to be really something to be you know wanting more of and so then i think that's what uh, bonnie ross is kind of mentioning here that there's some core features and core game modes that you kind of need to have on launch halo 4 biggest halo game ever we promised we were not going to do that with halo 5. halo 5 biggest um, halo game um, ever and so i think it's like we keep adding things on versus kind of taking a step back and saying what is really important and how do we get that right and make sure that we really are focusing on what's the right story to tell, um, what's the right multiplayer experience, and then learning what we did with both Halo 5 and MCC, we can keep adding things on. After hearing that, does make me feel a little bit more secure about 343's movement when it comes to Halo Infinite, what they're going to be doing with this game, because they definitely do recognize that uh, they try to they bit off a little bit more than they can chew when it comes to Halo 4, also Halo 5, and also the MCC. So they realize we need to take a step back, not push ourselves so hard and just creating content, and more just kind of creating what the good parts of Halo are, what the expected parts of Halo, 
talking about the split screen, talking about Forge on launch, talking about a good story, talking about excellent multiplayer. Being able to merge it all together to get that core aspect of what really makes Halo great and what makes to me, to me the best game on the market in my opinion. And obviously with the last few iterations it's been a little bit hit or miss when it comes to what makes the game great. Though I do feel that that 343 is taking a step back, they're realizing what they've done, what they can do forward, and how they can innovate in Halo. And I'm glad that 343 is taking their time with Infinite to make sure that the game that they do release is something that's really up to the standards of what Halo has created, which is incredibly high. Halo is one of the last bastions, I would say, of having a solid campaign and a really solid competitive and fun multiplayer. Story is incredibly important and so is multiplayer and we have audiences that you know champion both sides and then a lot of them like both of them oh she didn't really answer the question a whole lot about the game as a service model which obviously they've stated that's what they're going to be doing with halo infinite but she definitely i think she wanted to put a lot of emphasis on that we are thinking about making a good story it's hard to monetize a campaign but you can definitely do it with the multiplayer side of things I think that's what she really wanted to talk about because we all know what probably they will do when it comes to microtransactions in Halo Infinite. And she'll probably do like customizations, what they'll monetize in the game. Probably do something similar to what they did with say Blackout or uh, also Fortnite and also Apex Legends as well. I think they've done a pretty good model with that worth uh, being able to buy what you want. And lastly, Ryan does ask about the slip space engine here, as it kind of ties in with the uh, game as a service kind of thing, talking about what can this engine allow that wasn't able to be accomplished with the previous engine of Halo. And Bonnie Ross says this. Chris Lee will talk about this um, at E3. So Chris Lee is the um, head of the Infinite team. And I kind of would say that. So yeah, pretty big news right there that confirmed that Chris Lee will be talking about the slip space engine in detail at E3 so we get to know much more about what can be accomplished with this brand new engine for Halo because this is the first new engine Halo has had like ever. Like the, the, Bonnie Ross mentions in this interview that the engine, engine itself is like 20 plus years old. So being able to restart at the foundation level and work its way back up is going to be super fantastic for this game. I am super excited now for E3 2019. A little tease right there for you guys. So get that to look forward to. And that's going to be about it for the video today, guys. I will be talking more about this interview because there's a lot of little tidbits of information to talk about when it comes to uh, Halo, the, pre the history of 343 as well, and also just uh, content moving forward when it comes to Halo Infinite. So if you guys like these news informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it greatly helps out the channel. Leave a comment down below what you thought about this video. If you're new to the channel, want to stay up to date with anything Halo related, make sure to tap subscribe. If you're new or if missed any content from me as well, check out the videos on the screen right now. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.